it's time to learn CRUD. I mean create, read, update and delete operations. So we are done with our Mongo lab and database setup in last lecture. It's time to use the database and send calls using $HTTP service. As usual, I have prepared a project to start with. Let's run and understand quickly. So you can see I have two devs, one for the application actions and other one for the contained. You can see I have moved all of my HTML code to partials and I'm loading those partials using ng include directive. This looks much cleaner and my views are encapsulated in separate HTML file. So I have created one partial to contain the list of courses, one for adding the course and last one for editing the course. I'm going with a single controller inside which I'm having my blank course array. That's why I'm having blank table here. Some variables to toggle my views state. So you can see when I click on add new course button, the form gets visible. And when I click on cancel button, form is getting removed. I think rest is easy to understand. Let's first start with loading up course data from Mongo lab. So I'm going to first inject my dollar HTTP service here inside my controller. Then I'm going to call dollar HTTP dot get function here inside this load courses function, which I'm calling when I'm going to click on load courses button. Now we need a URL from where we can get this course data. This will be my Mongo lab URL and Mongo lab has exposed rest API calls, which we can use to send requests to perform CRUD operations. So how to get the URL so that we can load all of our courses, right? So I'm going to go to this URL and this page has all the help related to Mongo lab rest API. So we want to get all the records from a collection. Let's scroll down and see how we can get that. We have something called list documents here and this URL helps us to list all the documents. So I'm going to copy this URL, create one variable, say URL and assign the copied URL to it. Then we need to replace this my DB with our database name. So I'm going to open my Mongo lab URL, then log into the account. So you can see the database we have created is my academy. Let's use this database name. Next, we need to replace this collection name with course collection we have created in the last lecture. If I click on my database link here, you can see we have created the course collection, which already has some course records. Let's replace the collection name with course. So using this URL, we are connecting to my academy database and we want to load the data from course collection. One more important step we need to do is to pass the unique API key and we can get that from our account info. So click on this user link, you will be able to see the API key for your account. So I'm going to copy this key value to my clipboard, then come back to our HTML page. Now, if I want to pass the API key with this get request, I can send it by appending the API key as key value pair with my request. But my get function accepts the second argument, which is config object. So I'm going to pass an object and inside that object, I'll create a params object in which I'll pass my API key. Then chain the success method and callback function as argument. Then I'm going to assign the data to my courses as it will return the collection of courses from Mongo lab database. Let's refresh the application. Click on load courses button. Awesome. We got our course list populated, but this time it's coming from Mongo lab. So we are done with read operation. Next, let's add a course to the database. So when I click on add course button, we are displaying this add course form. And inside this form, I have already bound the course properties using 
ng model directive and using course object. So at runtime, this course object is gonna get created on my dollar scope object and it will have all the properties defined here in this form. Let's add ng click directive, then a function as value and course as argument to that function. Now let's write this add course function in a controller and console.log our course object. Refresh, load the course first, click on add course button, enter some data to add new course, click on add button, there we go. You can see we are getting the course object with all the values I have entered in the form. This is all happening because of two-way data binding of AngularJS. Now we are getting the new course object. Let's see how we can save it to the course collection in MongoLab. So we are going to use $HTTP.POST method to insert new record in our collection. The first argument is the URL. So it will be the same URL we have used while loading the collection. So first let me make this URL as a global variable. So it will be available to all, all the functions. Use the global URL variable. Second argument is a data to be inserted into the collection. And third argument is a config object, which will be the same we have used while loading courses. So I'm going to make this also as a global variable and use it in load courses function as well as add courses function. Then chain the success function and call back as argument. So if the course will get added successfully, I'm going to call load courses function to reload all the courses. So let's refresh, load the courses first, click on add new course button, enter some data, click on add button and there we go course has been added to the collection as we can see the same displayed in our course list. We can check the same in Mongo lab. Click on logo to come back to the home page. Click on our database. Click on course collection and there we go. You can see the new JSON object has been added to the collection. So AngularJS is converting this course object to JSON string and inserting the same in my collection here. The next step is to edit and delete the course and that we are going to do in next lecture.